Hey guys, this video is for anybody that's new to Uber Eats, maybe considering driving for Uber Eats. I'm going to take you along step by step while I accept and decline offers until I find a reasonable one that meets my needs. I am going to take you to the restaurant, inside the restaurant. I'm going to take you to drop off the order so you know what to expect. At the end of the video, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks to help you maximize your earnings, things that may come up a along the way that you may not know how to handle. So I'm gonna go over some different things, but I do wanna start off with one thing that I hear a lot from newer drivers, and that is, do I need to accept every order that comes my way? You do not need to accept every order that comes your way. I have been driving for three plus years, as many of you guys know, and I only accept offers that are reasonable for me, that make sense for me. Sometimes there's an area that I don't want to go to um, for various reasons. Maybe it's unsafe, maybe it's you know on the outskirts, I might lose phone service, or maybe it's a restaurant that I don't want to take an offer from because I know their wait times are super long and I don't want to take an offer from there. So you do have the right to decline offers that don't make sense for you or maybe you just don't want to do the offer. Now, a lot of people say by doing this, I'm eventually going to be deactivated. Again, I've been driving for three plus years. I have never been deactivated from any of the platforms that I drive from. That is just false. You will not be deactivated from declining. Again, you can accept what offers make sense for you. Now, another thing before we get started, you do need a hot bag to make sure that you keep the customer's food warm. Now, I have an Uber Eats hot bag that I purchased from ubereatsshop.com. You can get a hot bag from them or you can get one off of Amazon or wherever to make sure that you are keeping the customer's food warm. Think of it this way. If you ordered food, you would want your food to arrive warm. So make sure you put the customer's food in the hot bag. Now, the other thing with the hot bags is it can act as your badge. So if you take your hot bag in to the restaurant, let's say there's a long line out the door, which I've ran into a few, and you bring your hot bag in, people aren't thinking that you're cutting the line when you go to the front of the counter because this is like your badge. It's letting everybody know, I am a delivery driver. I am here to pick up an order. And then the other thing is, is when you're dropping off the order, taking the hot bag up to the door, one, it lets the neighbors know, hey, I'm a delivery driver for Uber Eats and I'm here to drop off food. Plus it lets the customer know, hey, it's my delivery driver that's here. Especially at nighttime, it's darker, you're going on people's properties. You don't know whose house you're exactly delivering to. So having some sort of identification lets the customer know, hey, my Uber Eats driver's here. They have my order. So you don't look suspicious, especially at nighttime. Before I go online, I just wanted to mention a couple of quick things. If you are able to catch an offer from your home, that is ideal, definitely worth testing out. Now, if you're not, there are hot spots, which you can see the darker spots on the map. That's typically where where all of your restaurants are. Sometimes you'll have to drive there to try to catch an offer, or you can turn on your app and drive to a hotspot and try to catch an offer on the way to where all of your restaurants are. Another question that I have been asked is, do you have to schedule on Uber Eats? You do not have to schedule. You can hop on anytime to try and get offers. Now, at the end of the video, I will go over the best times to drive to make the most money. And we're gonna go ahead and get this app turned on. Of course, any of my OG drivers, if you have any tips or tricks you want to add, do leave them in the comments down below for anybody that's new. So let's go ahead and get this app turned on. I'm going to go ahead and tap the go button and uh, we're going to see what the first offer brings. Usually when the app starts up for me, I'm having to decline. Um, so hopefully I don't have to decline too many, but definitely going to show you what I'm accepting and what I'm declining. So I will be back back with you as soon as an offer comes through. I have an order coming in for $4.48 for 4.7 miles. Now I would not take this order. If you're going to decline an order, there is a X in the right hand corner, or you can let it time out like I just did. Um, right now it is really slow with Uber Eats. It comes with the territory. Um, I haven't been getting a lot of offers, but at the end with my tips, I will tell you 
how to overcome this. Um, but yeah, I just let it time out. Um, if you want to, you can hit the X in the corner. But for $4.48 for 4.7 miles, that's an unreasonable offer. It states it's going to take 21 minutes. I like to take no less than $6 for an order because you got to take into consideration all the things that you can run into. You might have to wait a little bit longer at the restaurant for the order, or maybe you have trouble finding the customer's home or where they live. Um, so $6 is my minimum. And I usually like to get those type of offers for under two miles, give or take. Now for the rest of my orders, I typically like to stay within the $2 per mile ratio. For example, if I got a $10 offer, I would want to deliver that offer five miles or less. That will keep me within my $2 per mile ratio. So we're going to see what else we can get. I'm looking for a reasonable offer that's worth my time. Again, you got to always take into consideration when you're accepting an offer. There might possibly be a wait at a restaurant. You might have a hard time finding the customer. So you got to make sure that the pay is worth it as well as keep in mind you are using your own vehicle. Gas comes out of your pocket. Any maintenance that needs to be done. So you just have to keep in mind that you do have expenses that do come out of your pocket. You just don't want to just take anything because you might end up breaking even or even becoming negative when you come out here. And that is not the goal. When you come out here, you want to be utilizing your time. You want to be making money. You want to be profitable. So we're going to see what else Uber Eats brings me. An offer has came in for Sushi Zen $6.00 two cents for 2.6 miles and you'll see a little green button that says delivery you'll tap on that when you want to accept the offer so this offer falls within my category no less than six dollars it is 2.6 miles but it says it's going to take me 15 minutes i do know this restaurant so i know that the restaurant should have the order ready within a timely manner so i'm going to go ahead and go in there and check in with an employee see if the order is ready and with with other restaurants like let's say Popeyes or McDonald's there is typically a sign that you can look for for driver pickup and if not you just go up to an employee and say hey I'm here with Uber Eats I need to check on an order for so and so now with the customer's name always make sure you state one the company that you're with and two the customer's first name and last initial because there are times where I in the beginning have gone in there and let's say I had an order for David there was other David's you do not want the employee to hand you the wrong order because then the customer is going to get the wrong food so we're going to head in there and check on this order and hopefully it's ready and we can get these wheels to moving Just checking on an order for Kathleen B. Uber Eats. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. You too. Checked in with an employee and the order was ready. Now it's sitting on a shelf at this particular restaurant. Um, I know that they usually want me to check in with them and then they'll hand me the order. So it was ready, which is what I had expected. Like I said, I know this restaurant. They're usually pretty good. Now when looking at your app, you'll see the restaurant name down at the bottom. It says arriving soon, but obviously I'm here because I picked up the order. You can pull up at the bottom and it'll give the store name, the address, which the GPS will take you right here customer's name, how many items they have, what time they're expecting you by. But if you click on details to the right, it's going to give you a list of what they order. Now, typically what I'll do is I'll go in there because customers order drinks and the restaurants will forget them a lot of the time. So I'll always take a quick peek and see if there's any drinks. If there is, and I don't see one when I get the order, I'll ask to see if maybe they put it in the bag. Sometimes Sometimes they did it and they forgot and they'll hand it to you definitely want to make sure to get the customer's drink because if you ordered your meal and your drink didn't show up I'm sure you wouldn't be happy I know I wouldn't so I'm gonna go ahead and tap the X in the left hand corner that closes out now what we want to go ahead and do is slide start delivery don't tap it it needs to be slid and the GPS will load and it'll take us right to the customer and it says it's five minutes 
1.8 miles. It has the customer's name. Again, if you pull up on that, it's going to give you some more information, whether you're delivering to a house or an apartment. Luckily enough, the customer gave me the name of their apartment complex, which I absolutely love, especially if there's a lot of other apartment complexes around. Sometimes it can get confusing, especially if they're close to one another. Gave their apartment number and in the customer notes, you definitely want to pay attention to customer notes. It will give instructions sometimes of how to find them. Some places are a little bit more complicated. This customer said leave at door. Now lately the GPS's have been really good at taking you to the exact building, but you always want to make sure that what you have in your phone matches up to the building if you're delivering to an apartment complex because some buildings will have different addresses or different numbers on the building, but they might have the exact same apartment numbers within that building. I've made a mistake once before doing that. I kind of crossed the numbers up in my head for an apartment building and it wasn't the customer's correct apartment building. And I'm getting in my car and I'm getting a call saying, where is my order? And I'm like, oh my gosh, you feel horrible. It happens to the best of us. Always just double check. Even if it's a home address, just double check. Make sure you're dropping off at the correct address. Everything lines up because you don't want to get one of those phone calls driving down the road saying I didn't get my order. So we're going to go ahead and head over there. If the customer wanted me to hand them the order, it would say that in the customer note, or if they wanted me to leave it in a particular spot, they would sometimes leave a note on that too. So we're heading there now. I do have the food in the hot bag, um, keeping it warm for the customer and uh, we're heading there now. Orders dropped off. Like I said, GPS took me right to the customer's building. But again, you want to make sure that if the buildings are numbered differently, that you are at the right building and at the right apartment. Uber Eats requires you to take a photo if it's a leave at door order. So when you take a photo, make sure at least do your best to try to get the customer's apartment number in the picture, as well as the food that you dropped off. That way it proves that you did indeed drop it off at the right location. If for some reason the customer comes out and you end up handing the food to the customer, it does happen, um, you can just go ahead and skip the photo and then add a note handed to customer and then you can slide delivered and it'll close out your order and you can move on to the next one. Now for some tips, let's say you accidentally accept an offer. This tends to happen when you're at a drop off, you're about to go take a photo of the order at your drop off and Uber Eats sends you an order right when you're about to touch, take a photo and you accidentally accept an offer. You do not have to take this. This has happened to me many times. This is how you unassign the order. So what you'll do is you'll go ahead and pull up from the bottom screen and then there is a triangle in the bottom left hand corner. Go ahead and tap on that. You have all kinds of different reasons of why you want to cancel. I'm just going to go down to the bottom. It says not interested in this kind of trip. I'm going to go ahead and tap that because I don't know what I accepted. It says cancel in the customer's name, delivery. Yes, cancel. And of course, if you want to go back, you can tap no, go back. So I'm going to tap yes, cancel and it closes out the order, then you can move on to an offer that you're looking for. Now back to the last order I did. Now when I first did Uber Eats and I got done with my first order, it was showing a very small portion of the pay not what I accepted in the top. And right now it's showing $3.03. Now the other portion of the pay is the tip and the customer has up to an hour to adjust their tip. They can decrease their tip, they can increase their tip. Now out of all the time that I've been driving, I've only had one person take away their tip. Not sure why they did it, but out of all the deliveries, most of the time people will leave the tip alone or they'll increase it, which is always very nice when they do that. But if you want to look at your earnings for a particular day 
or maybe you want to check your tips later in the evening after you're done delivering, you can go to the three little lines in the top left hand corner, go down to earnings, click on that, and then it'll show your days that you've delivered. You can click on a particular day, open that up and look at your orders. It'll tell you if your tip is increased. You can kind of look at all those details in there. My other tip would be to have other apps on standby just in case one app is slow you can hop on another app now when you're first starting out of course you want to learn one app you want to get used to the process and then as time goes on you can bring other apps in so when I multi app I will turn on all my apps if you've seen my other videos and once I get a reasonable offer I will turn off all of my apps except for the one platform that I accepted an offer on and focus on getting that order dropped off but what you want to do is you want to sign up for other apps sometimes there's a waiting list and you at least want to be on that waiting list so when you're approved then you could put that app in your arsenal but I'm not saying go out there and and start multi-apping right away because if that was me I don't know if I could have in the beginning um, I would say focus on one app but definitely look into signing up for other apps if you're interested in signing up for DoorDash I do have my link in the description there are other apps like Grubhub Spark Driver and a whole lot of other apps and I'm actually going to be trying out some more apps this year to add to the arsenal that way if you know one or two apps slow down I have other apps so I can keep my wheels moving and stay busy now a question that I get asked frequently would be when is the best time to drive which is a really good question typically for me I would say it's around dinner time which is typically around 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. now lately I've noticed people People are ordering a little bit later so maybe 5 30 to 6 but everybody's market is going to vary um, on how busy it is at certain times and even though in the evenings sometimes it can be a little bit slower than maybe a Friday night or a Saturday night but typically dinner time is the busiest for me the second busiest would be lunchtime now although over the years lunchtime to me has a really really slowed down it's it's not how it used to be but again everybody's market is going to vary it's definitely worth testing out lunchtime for your market for me it used to be around 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. give or take a little bit sometimes people want to start ordering to like noon and sometimes it go like till 2 you just got to really check out your market see what the best time is for you now some people say breakfast is really good for them um, for me I've never really had any luck with breakfast although I do need to give it a try again but in the past when I've tested it out it just wasn't busy for me my main busy time is during dinner time but again you have to test out these different time slots and see what works best for you see what area brings in the most money the best time that brings in the most money for you another tip that I should mention is when you're accepting offers you're gonna have the little green button that says delivery when the offer comes up which you'll tap if you want to accept the offer. But pay attention, if there is a number two next to the word delivery in parentheses, that means there is two orders combined within this offer. Now with this particular offer that I'm showing you, this is an automatic decline. This is what I call a backwards offer. The pay is $5.51 and the miles is higher than it. Miles is 7.3 and like I said, if I'm going to be accepting a delivery, I want at least around $2 per mile. This is an automatic decline, but do pay attention if there is a number next to the word delivery. That shows it has two orders within it. So either you're going to go to one restaurant and pick up both orders for two different customers, or you're gonna go to two separate restaurants. Um, maybe it's Taco Bell and maybe one orders from McDonald's and deliver to two customers. Now, one time I did accept an offer. It was from two different restaurants, P.F. Chang's and 7-Eleven, and come to find out I was delivering to the same customer, which is actually nice. It was a good paying offer, reasonable miles, so it actually worked out good. So just pay attention to 
the number of orders you're picking up to next to the word delivery. That way you're not surprised. My next tip would be to always check in on your order with an employee. One, your order will either be ready or they're going to point you to a shelf where your order should be sitting. If your order ain't on the shelf, I would walk up to the employee, say, hey, I checked the shelf for, let's say it's John S. His order's not on the shelf. Do you know about how much longer it's going to be? Always be polite and professional. Um, sometimes the employees will ignore you. <laughs> it comes with the territory. It happens to all of us OG drivers. Sometimes you have to get their attention and say, you know, excuse me, I'm trying to check on an order, but always be polite and professional. That way things will always continue going smooth for you. I know there's a lot of frustrating situations that can happen, but you don't want to let none of that stuff ruin your day or ruin your money. Got to kind of try to stay calm. But a lot of the times you'll run into, especially at fast food restaurants, employees will not look at you. They'll ignore you. But I always try to get somebody's attention and say, you know, hey, excuse me. And sometimes <laughs> I have to say it a few times. It happens to the best of us, um, but you just have to be patient. But do check in on your order. I have a few restaurants in my area where they will sometimes put the order on the shelf. But there are times that I found out that they will just have them sitting in the back because nobody's brought them out on the shelf. And if I took a seat, who knows how long I would be sitting there? Probably way too long. And that's where you can start wasting your time, wasting the, the money that you could be out there earning. So what I'll do is, you know, if I don't see my order on the shelf, I'll go up to an employee, say, hey, I'm here picking up an order for John S for Uber Eats. Uh, do you know about how much longer it's going to be? Um, and usually they'll go follow up for you. If they tell me, oh, it's about five minutes, it's 10 minutes, you know, we're running behind. I will set my timer on my phone. If that timer goes off and nobody's checked in with me, the order still hasn't came in. I'll go back up to that employee or another employee and say, hey, you know, I've been waiting about five minutes. Check in on that order and see about how much longer it's going to be. That way you're just not sitting around wasting time. You want to make sure you stay on top of these things. My next tip would be when you're out delivering orders, always be aware of your surroundings. Now, if there's ever a time where you feel unsafe, you do not have to deliver the order. You need to go pull off in a safe, well-lit area, call support, let them know the situation and that you do not feel comfortable delivering the order. There is no amount of money that is worth your safety. I've mentioned this before. One time I was on my way to deliver a customer's order. Customer had messaged me that they had heard gunshots and not to deliver the order, which I definitely appreciated. I went and found me a safe, well-lit area, called support. They assisted me. I ended up not delivering the order and ended up going home for the evening because it was my last order for the night. So always go with your gut instincts. Again, if you feel unsafe, you do not have to deliver the order. Do call support and let them know the situation so that they can help you appropriately. My next tip would be to pay attention to the opportunities tab. There is three little lines in the top left-hand corner of your app. Go ahead and tap on that. And I believe it's the fourth from the top. It says opportunities. You, you can see different opportunities. Sometimes it's boost pay during specific time periods. Sometimes it's challenges. You complete a certain amount of deliveries. You get a certain amount of pay. Um, so definitely always keep an eye on that. There are sometimes some really good opportunities. So always worth checking out. And my final tip is tracking your miles. You want to make sure you are doing this as this is a tax write-off. This will help maximize your earnings. If if you do not have a way to track your miles, there is an app called Solo. It is meant for gig workers. It'll help you track your miles, estimate your taxes, help you track your earnings. If you have other things to write off, let's say you got a phone holder, maybe a hot bag for doing a gig work, that is a write off as well. You can input that in the app. So they help you track things like that. In certain cities, there is guaranteed earnings. So it's a great app to check out. They do offer a free trial with my link in the description. If you do use my link, you do get a $10 sign up bonus. There is also a monthly subscription fee if you decide um, Solo's working out.
out for you, you can write that monthly subscription off. But, but no matter what, you do want to make sure you are tracking your miles. Again, this will help you maximize your earnings. And to my OG drivers out there, if I have missed any tips or you have anything to add, do leave a comment down below to help out the newer drivers. And of course, if you guys find this video helpful, please give it a like. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Ring the bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys.